This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm starting work on installing the BQ Hermit Crab 2 on my Ender 3 Max Neo. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I should start off by saying that BQ sent me this unit free of charge. Now this is the standard unit, not the CAN bus, which is a little confusing. When you look at the packaging, you're not sure what you're getting. But if you look down here, this is just the standard version. So they've sent me this for free. I'm gonna give my honest thoughts on this, as well as do an unboxing and an install. Now, for those of you that don't know me, I use the Hermit Crab 1 on my Mercury 1. And I'll be honest, I've gone ahead and bought a hand version of this unit to install on that printer. And I'll be doing that in a couple of weeks. But today, I'm not particularly happy with the way my Ender 3 Max Neo is running. I have a Creality Sprite Pro on there. and I actually had some issues with that. And so I'm going to install the Hermit Crab as well as the H2 V2S. So I'm going to install these and I'll walk you through the steps. Now, I've already taken the wrapper off this, but let's look and see what's in the packaging. So we have an install guide and there's also an install guide on BQs or Big Tree Tech, depending on how we want to say it today, on their GitHub page. Rubber Ducky. I have the base unit here. And this is smaller than the original unit. And then I have the clips to go in. And this, I should point out, is not the same as the original unit. So when you switch, you're not going to be able to use the changers for the old one you need to use this you'll need to new, use all new now this is significantly lighter in fact i'm really surprised by how white it is it seems to snap in real easy snap apart easy enough and we'll need to see how easily this installs. Now the traditional unit, if I remember correctly, was actually fairly easy for me to install. Getting the wiring correct is a whole different thing. We'll work on that. So let's just look and see what else in the box. So we have three different tool changers. And let's see if we can get this out. These are really in here pretty good. Ah, there's two different boxes. That's why there's a problem. Let's open this up. So there's wheels and for the carriage. That's good. Some tools, twist ties. And this actually comes with palm wheels. So that's interesting. That the old one did not come with that. Trash side. And let's look at the wiring. So now it looks like this comes with several different wirings. So we have a long wire harness. Let me take this apart and let me see about how long this is. So the wire harness, now run through this. It's I think over a meter long. So I have the wires that go into the board. And then it's pretty compact. The wires, I believe, that all go into the tool head. So it's going to be pretty simple. I'm actually going to use this. This seems to be bundled really well. I'm also noticing. Everything here is labeled, which I like, and it's labeled on both ends. So that should be pretty handy and should speed things up pretty significantly for me. 
definitely put those aside. So I'm going to put the wiring aside. And let's go ahead and switch over to the printer. And we'll start taking things apart and then get ready to put everything together and rewire it. So let me switch views and we'll get started. So here's my Ender 3 Max Neo. As you can see, it has a linear rail. So it's going to change how we're doing the install a little bit. And so we'll start off by removing the sprite, removing the CR touch, and then also removing the carriage. Now we will have to do the wiring and all that, uninstall that, but let's just start with, with removing everything off the rail. Now as a first step, I wanna go over here and just unplug the printer. Last thing I need is to cause a short, or worse yet, electrocute myself. So I'm just gonna remove the wire, wire harness. And then I have the three screws over here on the side holding the extruder in place. So let's remove those. And I have my magnetic cup here that I use for my screws. So that way I don't lose anything. For those of you that watch me a lot, you'll notice that I tend to drop things a lot. And so anything I can do to not mess up here is a good thing. Now, one of the things I've noticed with this hot end, I got this used, and I'm actually thinking there may I may need to replace the fan here because I I think I actually had a short in it. So we're just going to take this extruder and put it aside, set it right here. I will need the CR touch off of it, and let's remove. Now, interestingly enough, I'm noticing this is really loose. So I have to wonder, was this really holding this on well at all? It really doesn't feel like it. That might be another problem with the extruder is I didn't have it on here tight. Now, when I originally did the install, particularly with the linear rails, I had all sorts of problems with the belt. And I'm thinking that's part of my issue right now. So I got the initial mounting plate off. And then I guess when I installed this, I had a secondary plate in between the mount for the sprite and then the block. Let's get all this out. I'm actually going to throw these pieces away because I don't want to put them back on. Plus, I'll be honest, I, I think I'd want to spend some time looking to see if I can figure out a little bit different way of mounting this. That's sliding all right. Now, I have grease on this rail. And what I'm going to do is wipe this off a little bit. Seems like I have a lot on here. And the block seems to be sliding all right, so that's good. I've switched back over to my desk. It turns out I actually do need the directions that came in the box. These are not the same that are on GitHub. The GitHub directions are more wiring than anything else. This set of instructions is how to mount the plate if you're using a linear rail. And basically, it's a linear rail in the exact orientation I'm using. One of the things you need is you need these little hooks in the back to attach the belt to. So you have, let's look at these. I have a couple different little pieces that come with this. We need to figure out which one we need. It's looking like I need to use this piece here. 
and this upside down. Now this is for a single belt. So that sort of makes sense. So that's for a single belt. Let's take this. But take the plate off. And then it looks like this actually needs to be attached something like this. So this will be attached like that. And then I need to take this off and then this will screw directly into the into the carriage. So let's do this. Let's take this piece off so you can see all the holes. I want to be really gentle with these. This is my electronics. Also, these are tiny screws. Taking that out. So you can see there's four holes here, right here. So this, these four holes are going to sit right in the uh, carriage. So let's take this. And I'm going to look through my screws here. Looks like I want to use these screws. So let me pour out these screws. I can actually open the bag in a timely manner. I just need two of them. Let's get two screws out. And let's see if. So this, and I'm looking at this drawing here, looks like it sits like this. Now there's two holes in a row. The way I'm interpreting the drawing is it's on the bottom hole here. So I'm gonna to try to hold this. Let's screw them right in, so that's good. And I guess these holes are threaded. Let's get these in. Make sure both these are tight. Yeah. So this is matching the drawing now. And it looks like, based on this drawing, this is going to slide right over the carriage. So let's switch back over to the printer and we'll install this onto the carriage. Now I'm going to be honest, I had a bit of a camera snafu and it rebooted on me as I was screwing in the piece here. But as you can see, I just screwed it in. So the four screws going directly into the carriage. I'm sliding over here and as far as I can tell, this is triggering my end stop, so that's good. Now, next step, what I'm going to do is install the electronics board back on here very gently. So I want to be careful with the screws. And see if we can get this in. So I'm just screwing this in, and I'm not doing it too tight because I don't want to damage the board. Okay, that's on there. And then let's just take a plate, put that on here as well, and make sure everything snaps in. That snaps in, we're sliding, and we are triggering the end stop. So all of that is good. Now, for our next step, we need to put the belts on the back, so we need to run them through the little slots on the metal piece. So let me turn the printer around, and then we'll see if we can get those installed. So I've zoomed in here a little bit. Hopefully this is good enough to see. So it looks like we got one side of the belts in. Now I got the other side in. Now what I'm noticing is 
I have a heck of a lot of slack here. And what I'm going to do is take off these little clips, move them closer, and then put my zip tie back on here. So I'll show you these clips, and this is what I used previously. These are actually pretty cool. Let's take zip ties off. So, throw away the trash here. These just slip out of the belt. And you can see they're little groove pieces. So what happens is, is I just need to go up to the top here. And I'll slide this back in. Slide that in. Make sure it's all the way up. And I'm just going to go to the top here and slide this in. So that's right up here at the top. And I should need to put in, let's see if I can do this. A little awkward here. And what I'll need to do is put a zip tie around these. That's a little difficult. I'm just going to get these started right here. I'll take the belts out. It'll be easier. I can see it a little bit better. Let me get the... Get this right in the right spot. There we go. Let's just make sure that's... Down a little bit. I just got to make sure the teeth are facing the right direction. Now that should give me enough to. Yeah, I can then tighten the belt and loosen it again. We pull the belt out very gently. And what I'm simply going to do is take a zip tie. So I'm taking my small zip ties. In order to hold this in place, I just simply wrap this around the belt and the little piece here. In fact, let's do that, make this simple myself. So I'm just going to make a loop here. Let me tighten it a little bit. I'll go up here where this piece is at, hold it in place with my fingers. And then tighten the zip tie. And since I've tightened it, I can then clip the excess off. Then this just goes back up here and slips right in our groove. I'm going to do the same for the other side. Just take it out, take my zip tie, I'm going to make a loop here. I'll make this one a little smaller. And then I'm just going to thread this through. And you can see there's little grooves on the side of this clip. Go hold the zip tie in place. And then just pull it tight. What that does is keep the belt in place. Slide this back up here. And then what I should be able to do See if this works. Is let me get the belt going the right direction. It might help. Still don't have the belt facing the right direction, but we'll let me fix that off camera. I need to turn it around so I can actually see the belt. But I have the bottom one. Now I will say this: I am going to clip the belts to get rid of this excess. And in fact, I'll wait till I, I have it all situated and then put that out. So as you can see, I have the belts tightened and installed. So right now, the hardware is installed. 
I just need to switch over and do the wiring. Now, with that being said, I'm going to pause for the day and I'll come back in part two and install the wiring. That way I can just keep these, uh, the install process separated. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Again, I received this kit from BQ for free. And this is my honest review. So far, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I feel like this is already easier to install than the Hermacrap one. So again, questions or comments posted below, and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.